that was unclear now is clear. Because the world, the universe, and truth are far bigger than the thoughts that you and I have accepted. It's not what you do, it's who you are. This moment right now is the single most important and beautiful moment of our life. Be in this moment, play in this moment, have this moment, live this moment. Want what's happening now. You begin to see that life is not so serious. That we're here to enjoy this experience of life through the tears, through the sadness, and through the fears. Every stream in life, every experience of life is leading me to the ocean of my existence. It's awesome stuff to live. Oh, Buddha! <laughs> we don't need to do anything. There is no place else to be but where we are. Let me ask you a question. What's more important to you? Right over wrong, good over bad, or love itself? For a lot of people, right over wrong, good over bad is much more important than love. There's so much pride that can be built up over being right. If you're a right person, if you think you're right about everything, you've got all this pride. And then you call it love, and oh boy, you can just wheel that all over everyone. Or if you choose to take the path of love, you're going to have to become very humble. And most people don't like humility. <laughs> they like pride. Let's talk a little bit about right over wrong, good over bad. You know, if you live in your mind and your body, you're going to be living for right over wrong, good over bad. You're going to be living for the things you believe in and the things that you want. Knowledge, ego, prestige, power, all is working on the whole idea of thinking that if I'm right, I'll get what I want. For people who don't have any sense of their own spirit, rightness is very important. Some people enjoy being right and some people, I've noticed, enjoy being the victim. They just love it. That way they can be right in their wrongness. Kind of crazy psychology, but it's what they like to do. And in all the counseling I've done, I've found that these two are the most popular postures for people to take in their ego, in their body, in their mind. The whole idea of life is to find the spirit of yourself. You'll only find the spirit of yourself through love. If you don't go to love, you will never know who you are. Love is the space that creates your spirit, where your spirit lives, moves, and has its being. I can't teach you about this. I can show you ways to get there. I can point my finger to it. But you're going to have to begin to look at it from the value of yourself. What's more important to you? The pride of being right? The pride of thinking that you know everything from the form of your knowledge or the direct experience of love in your life that will humble us to our very knees. Nothing in my life has been more humbling than love itself. In the small moments that I have found love, it has been because I was willing to give up, surrender my rightness for the sake of love itself, to do everything I could, so to speak, to make love possible. Probably the greatest sacrifice you will ever make in your life is the pride of being right. It's interesting how we are. We say we want love and we want the things that create love. We want God, the things that are God. And yet, we are so self-righteous about ourselves. Religion is such a pathetic way to try to reach God because it has so many rights and wrongs, goods and bads. I've often thought of the way we are in this world like all of us are at a four-way stop and there's no traffic light and everybody's sitting there going, who goes first? What if there were no rules and you were sitting there, who would you let go first? 
People who were right would just charge on through the intersection. Some of the victims would just sit there and wait for everybody to go through and then sit there and weep and ask why no one would let them through. <laughs> That's why we need rules in this world. For people who uh, don't have any sense of their own spirit and need to be told what to do, how to do it, just basic common courtesy to get through this life, we need rules. But what I'd like to suggest to you, if you are willing to go up higher in the scale of life, higher in the essence of life, is that you give up being right and start realizing love inside yourself for a brief moment. Love is found in following your breath in giving up the whole idea of right and wrong, giving up the perimeter of right and wrong, stepping outside the perimeters of your mind and starting to see that love has to do with the quality of a life that lives within you beyond your thinking's capacity. The mind is only in survival mode. The body's only in survival mode. If you are willing, so to speak, to give up survival, to die and be born again, Die to your concepts, die to your ideals, die to your beliefs, die to being right, die to being wrong. Give them both up and find out what is left, which is love. You will find your life changes drastically. This is the gestalt of a person's life. To be willing to give up those things that keep us from God itself. Most people would rather be religious. Religion's really important to people because uh, then you don't have to work too much upon yourself. All you have to do is go and get all excited emotionally about things and accept uh, whosoever authority is in front of you, whoever has the loudest voice and can say it the most often. Hitler had a saying, a false becomes a true when the false is just said over and over again. Eventually it will appear to be the truth to the masses. It's the truth. He who has the loudest voice seems to win. What I'm saying to you is the still small voice that lives inside you, that is way beyond your human mind, is the one you and I need to listen to the most. It is the one we need to humble ourselves to the most. It has nothing to do with rightness. It has nothing to do with being good. It has to do with being simple and coming back to the basic simplicity of life and allowing life to have its way with us. I'm always amused and amazed at what people define as good, a good person. A good person is someone who does something for you that benefits you. Who is good? Is a Christian a good person? Who's a good Christian? Someone who's pious, doesn't seek anything for themselves? Or is it a Buddhist? It's a good Buddhist who just meditates and doesn't think of women. Oh my God, you've got to start letting go of all this stuff if you're going to be happy. There's no such thing <laughs> as being right. Rightness has nothing to do with love and you're going to have to be willing to give it up because no matter how right you are, how good you are about anything, nobody likes you anyway. People are going to be jealous of your goodness and they're going to be looking for the faults that live inside you. Then they're going to start trying to undermine your goodness. We're all suspicious of people who are too good. Faults are beautiful things. I'm not interested in your faults, my friend. I'm not interested in perfect people and I don't expect my students to be perfect. I expect only one thing out of them, total effort. The effort to reach themselves. Their effort not to judge other people. Their effort to find their spirit. Their effort to know themselves. And if you're willing to go that route, if you're willing to do that, then you're willing to sacrifice your rightness for the sake of love itself. And when you're willing to do that, that's when something's going to change in your life. You're never a good person. Forget that. Always be sincere. If you're sincere with your spirit, and if you're interested in your spirit, then your goodness will naturally have its way with you. Lao Tzu was a very interesting man, and he shared something with us many thousands of years ago that will help us immensely. I love the Tao Te Ching. It helps us understand the very presence of our life. I want to read to you something from the Tao that will help you understand how he defined goodness. 
I couldn't agree with it more, but you're going to have to listen to it without your worldly ears, without your logic and your reasoning. You're going to have to listen to it from your heart, from a sense of space and silence. So what I'd like you to do is just kind of close your eyes for a moment, let go of the things you believe in, let go of the things you want, and just kind of let these words permeate inside of you. A truly good man is not aware of his goodness and is therefore good. A foolish man tries to be good and is therefore not good. A truly good man does nothing, yet leaves nothing undone. A foolish man is always doing, yet much remains to be done. I hope you were able to really hear what Lao Tzu was trying to say to us. Wow! The truly good man doesn't know he's doing good. He's not aiming his behavior at someone, trying to show them what is right and wrong, good and bad. He's simply doing his nature. Jesus, Buddha, these are people who were just teaching themselves. They were offering their spirit to us. They weren't thinking about, well, is it good to change water into wine? Is it bad to feed the multitudes? They're not thinking in terms of showing off like we are. Where there is pride, there will be arrogance, and where there is arrogance, there will only be rightness. You've got to give up your arrogance and your sense of rightness for the sake of love itself. When a man is trying to be good, he can't be good. Lao Tzu gives us such power, such insight to really be in love and on the spiritual path means that you are not aiming yourself at someone. You're not doing something for a reason. You're following the spirit of your nature. And in following the spirit of your nature, you're following your life. And in following your life, you've followed your spirit. You've followed God. You've followed life. That is the most noble experience a human being will ever do in their life. It is not religious. It is not philosophical. And you cannot learn to do this. You must practice it every single day of your life you practice. This work is a practice not some event you achieve, not something you do. It's a rather a non-doing. It is being deliberate in your non-doing so you can just feel your life. I don't know how many people watching this program can hear what I'm trying to say. That doesn't matter, but I can say this. If you want a life that's truly different, you're gonna to have to find a way around your own mind. The problem with most of us is we try to find love through our mind. And if you try to find love through your mind, you're kind of try to justify everything you do and everything you say to get the affection of other people. I want you to think about this. You formulated a committee of people around you in the form of your family, your friends, your co-workers, anyone who you think is important to you. And you've told them, hey, you tell me when I'm good. You tell me when I'm bad. You tell me when I have the right to love myself. So you work really hard and you do all the things they want you to for how long a period of time before they all decide, hey, the committee has met, we've all decided, we vote, you're mediocre, you're okay, but you're not good. How do you like that? And that's what most people face. I would never leave my self-acceptance to the esteem of other people. Nobody likes you anyway. Why are you worried about what other people think of you? They're talking behind your back as it is. Take a look. I say, work in love. Stay diligent in your practice. If you look at great spiritual masters, they're not worried about what's politically correct. They're not looking at people going, well, let me explain myself and kind of homogenize the teachings. Love is very graphic. It's very powerful. It's raw and it's beautiful. And the reason it is, is because love brings us to the simplicity of the moment. You have to give up wanting to be right over wrong to know love. Look at this. Is there anything right with that? Is there anything wrong with that? It's just doing what it's doing. Some people get it, some people don't. It doesn't make it bad and it doesn't make it good. That's the way you need to look at yourself. Follow the integrity of your spirit. Find your spirit. 
love it, follow it. Let it have its way with you. Some people will get what you're doing, some people won't get what you're doing. It's not my business whether you understand me or not. It is my business whether or not I understand me. And if I can understand what I'm doing, how I'm following my light, how I'm following my spirit, then that's enough integrity for me. And I can make all the mistakes I need to get to that place. I don't need anyone to tell me how bad or right I am. Lao Tzu said to us that nobility was the root of all humility, and humility is the root of nobility. Give up rightness and be noble. We are noble when we are humble. Humility doesn't mean, oh, I'm so bad and wrong for all the things I've done. That's pride of being evil. That's rationalizing our evil. No, humility is a point of looking at yourself and saying, you know, I don't always know what it is I'm doing. I make mistakes. I'm on this path and I make mistakes. You're in this world, you make mistakes. Everybody makes them. Humility is the ability to see them without shaming yourself, without feeling guilty. It is seeing that our pride has nothing to do with love. And when I'm willing to give up pride for the sake of love, I become extremely humble. You need to forgive me. Always you need to forgive me. I always tell my students at the end of every discourse, forgive me. Why? Because what I'm saying shouldn't be taught. It even shouldn't be said. And you have to forgive me for these TV programs. They're not perfect either. But this is just an effort to share with you something very noble, something between my words, something I'm not saying with my words. I want you to love yourself and to accept yourself just the way you are. You don't have to be perfect in my presence and you don't ever have to be right with me. What I'm interested in is your authenticity, your deep spiritual honesty, your compassion with yourself, your ability to forgive yourself, and your willingness to be, as Lao Tzu said in the Tao, to be in the watercourse way. Water is interesting. It seeks its own level. And wherever it is, there's life. Wherever your heart is, wherever your life is, there is life. Don't waste your time trying to be right for other people. Trying to gain whatever it is they want you to be for their own selfish purposes. Nobody likes you anyway. So you might as well be true to yourself. And in being true to yourself, you will have found yourself and yourself is the greatest treasure you will ever know. It's not about winning it from other people. It's about allowing it to happen within yourself and appreciating everything that you are. So one of the things that we have to begin to look at is, do we want love or do we want affection? Most people would settle for affection as love because it makes their body and their mind feel good. Glorifying that beautiful ego of ours and gratifying us beyond, well, you know where I'm going with that. So which is it going to be for you? A lot of people who are buried here lived for that. What are you going to live for? You know, the only thing worth living for is love itself. And love has a little price that you and I have to pay if we're going to enter into love. <laughs> that price is so dear. We have to give up what we fear. We have to give up our right and wrong, our good and bad. We have to give up our judgments and the living of and for gratification. That's the price. I don't make the rules. I'm just telling you my experience. Not a lot of people are willing to do that. They want other people to be responsible for how they feel. And I think that's one of the saddest things we do to the people we love. We say, you go out and make me feel good. Look, practice this week a little bit. What would it be like if you gave up your judgments, gave up the idea of right and wrong, good and bad? Maybe you would find love for what love is. Maybe you would find the happiness your mind and body could never give you. If you give it over to your mind and body to make you happy, they're just going to make you very small and very petty. Coming to uh, graveyards like this has a way of really sobering us up in a way, bringing us back to our heart and our soul. 
You gotta love past your senses if you're gonna be happy in this world. And if that doesn't make sense to you, hey, nobody likes you anyway. There's nothing I could say that would ever be able to help you. But if you do understand it, then everything I say can do nothing but help you. We're gonna be back again next week here on Aspire with another edition of Nobody Likes You Anyway. I hope you will uh, come and play with us. Thank you for watching. Namaste. And I hope you understand it. Please forgive me for my rep, rep, rep. The Viagra, I had to send back the three, <laughs> the three tubes. My mouth, it doesn't work anymore. I'm a Jewish man, I don't know where I'm going. Help, help, help. Okay. Sound of Sazen. Where are we? What am I doing? Finger out of the nose? If you've enjoyed this television program, Aspire, and would like a copy for yourself, there are, they are, that. Each, wait a minute, I'm muddled. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Have a great day.